For those of you who haven't spent much time with Flutter, we're an open source, portable UI toolkit designed to enable beautiful, fast experiences on any platform. With Flutter, we want to unleash you to build, test, and deploy beautiful mobile, web, desktop, and embedded applications from a single code base. So let's talk about the forward part. What's coming next? With this event, we want to give you some sneak previews of a lot of different features that aren't yet stable quality, but represent work in progress. We're going to show you a number of different demos of things that we're working on for Flutter and Dart. And they fall into four main categories. Breakthrough graphics performance. Delivering seamless integration with the underlying platform, whether it's web, mobile, or desktop. Bringing support early to new and emerging architectures and continuing our focus on developer productivity. So one feature that we're super proud of is Impeller, which, like we mentioned before, is a major rewrite of our graphics engine. And you can see for yourself just how smooth Impeller is by installing Wondrous for iOS. But in some edge cases, like complex SVG clipping, we can see Impeller making a really huge performance difference. One advantage that we have because we're building from the ground up is that this new architecture can support brand new use cases. So what if we did want to do something totally new, like maybe 3D? So right now I have a pretty simple app. It just has an image widget to display a 2D version of Dash that's created from this PNG file. So nothing fancy. She is looking cute, but I really want to make her 3D. So let me go ahead and switch out this widget over here. And instead, we're going to use a scene. And scene accepts a node, which can take an asset. And in this case, my asset is going to be a model file. It's actually something called a GLB file. So I'll save that. Oops. And reload. And she's 3D. But the thing is that we were just talking about performance, so I think we need to turn it up a notch, right? Instead of just showing a single dash, I think we want to show a whole bunch of dash is. <laughs> so I have my helper function called many nodes, and I'm going to wrap it around my node object. Press save. Again, we'll hot reload. And now we have a whole bunch of dashes. It's actually a cube of dashes. 7x7 seven seven cube to be exact, so that's 343 dashes walking around, so that means more than 10,000 individual joints that are being evaluated at every frame with Hot Reload. Thank you, Impeller. <laughs> We're working on two new tools, and what these will do is generate something called bindings that allows us to communicate with iOS or Android APIs directly from our Dart code. So to automatically generate bindings for iOS, we're going to use this tool called FFI Gen. And now that I have all the configuration set, I can just automatically generate these bindings by copying this command into the terminal. And this will just run FFI Gen. Right? So we can see that it's running. And like I said, this will auto-generate some code that basically just acts as the glue that allows us to call platform code directly from Dart. So that was iOS, and on the Android side, things look really similar. We use this tool called JNI Gen. So this is Dart, and I'm just taking advantage of those bindings that we generated using JNI Gen. I want to show a second thing, uh, which uh, is uh, called element embedding. And this is another uh, shift of, of work that we're doing, another um, piece that we're doing to improve the quality of the web experience uh, with Flutter. Something that we've been working on here enables you to take Dart and Flutter and compile it and put it in a div as a web component so it can integrate deeply with the rest of the platform. And because what you're looking at here is just a regular HTML div, you can do other things with it. Or I could even switch it into a device mode and skew it. So let's look forward. And we're going to start with WebAssembly. And what I'm running here uh, is the Flutter counter app, as you may recognize it from the past. But this version of the Flutter uh, uh, web app is not using JavaScript. 
In fact, if I go into the dev tools and I make that a little bit bigger, you can see that what we've got here is instead of the usual sort of main.dart.js, which is normally the big thing that contains everything, we've got main.dart.wasm. And this is the compiled version of this code to uh, WebAssembly. Adding to the complexity of this, WebAssembly has been around for a little while, but the bit that is new is WebAssembly GC, which is a new in-development standard for garbage-collected languages. And Flutter is one of the very first garbage-collected languages to support this uh, extension to the WebAssembly standard when it comes out. So now we get all the benefits of WebAssembly from a loading perspective in terms of performance, and we also get the ability to go and interoperate with other, lang other languages that are compiled to WebAssembly. So that's coming soon, support for compiling to WebAssembly uh, from Flutter in the web. Our vision for Dart is to enable you to create the highest quality apps with leading productivity on any platform your customers care about. And to do just that, I am happy to announce Dart 3 Alpha. And over 700,000 apps have been launched to date using Flutter. From small apps, from entrepreneurs, to those with over a billion downloads. And as GitHub noted in their recent Octavus, uh, Flutter is one of the top three open source projects by contributors. Every day, we're inspired and honored by your support. We build Flutter with you and for you. We want to close in recognition that our goal is to help you. And we love seeing the ways that Flutter helps to build a better world.